Okay. Now I would love to welcome my very good friend Shruti Nanda up to speak. She is a junior at Acton Boxborough Regional High School. She has a sister named Priyanka who also is in this program as well. She loves karate, ODC, and she in the future she would love to do computer programming and chemistry. Please welcome my good friend Shruti up to speak. Good evening everyone. Um, thank you all for coming out tonight and really coming and listening to a variety of topics today and I'm very excited to share with you all what I have for you. But before I begin, can everyone hear me? Yes. yes. Alright, great. Now, a lot of events have really been occurring at my Acton Boxborough High School community over the past two weeks and unfortunately two students, one AB alumni as well as a current senior, committed suicide. And I know that's a very heavy topic on a Friday night that I'm sharing with you. However, while reflecting on what has been going on and what and the grieving of the students, one question that really comes to my mind is about happiness. And my question is, what does it mean to be happy? And that took a long time for me to really realize, but right now I just wanted to ask you guys, what is the first thing that you think of when you hear, what does it mean to be happy? Can anyone give me some sample responses? Peace. Family. Family. Peace. Love. Peace. Love. Flower power. Flower power. I'm not sure what that is, but all right. Kind. These are, any other responses? Kind. Kind. Okay. So these are some interesting responses. Well, for me, in order to answer this question, it was actually very difficult for me. And I had to go back to a lot of my past experiences to really answer the question. And one experience I had was before my sophomore year. And that summer, I traveled to New Delhi, India to volunteer for an international organization called Sight Savers. And Sight Savers is an organization which really works to help eliminate avoidable blindness as well as provide equal opportunity for disabled people. Now I was given the opportunity to visit a vision center or an eye care center located in a slum. And there I helped the center generate patient statistics such as the number of males versus females, what patients were prescribed glasses, and also which patients were diagnosed with certain eye diseases such as diabetic retinopathy, cataracts, glaucoma. That was a bunch of words you probably don't understand. Maybe some of you do, but these certain eye diseases. And then I analyzed that data and showcased what I'd collected, providing further recommendations on how to really improve the logistics of the vision center. Now, in addition to my analysis and presentation, the tour of the Vision Center that day and seeing the people there really had a profound impact on me, and that was the key factor to really answering my question. For example, I saw the social stigma behind women and glasses, and how, although many women were in desperate need of wearing glasses, they still refused to do so because they were self-conscious and they had this inner struggle inside them that if I wear glasses, I'll look smart or I'll look bad and I don't want to appear differently to society. In addition, they would often sacrifice their own eye surgeries and their eye treatments because they felt that their duties at home were more necessary. Just walking into that vision center that day was like entering a new world with new problems and situations to face. And I realized that the opportunities life has given me are something I should always be thankful for. In addition to what I saw regarding the woman, the people there really touched me. And one thing about them was that despite where they were and despite the resources that they had there living in the slum, they were so content and they were so happy with everything that was going on in the vision center. Now, when we go to an eye care center here for our like yearly eye checkup, you know, when the doctor delays the appointment by barely five to 10 minutes, we get so angry and we start complaining about the bad service and we start complaining to the doctor. We've all done that, right? Come on, I've done it yeah. too. Yeah. However, over 
there in New Delhi, there was about 50 to 100 people at that vision center. And they would wait for hours in this large room for their eye checkup. And I didn't even hear a single complaint from anyone. And they were just so excited to go and get their eye appointment done. Whereas here, we take that for granted. Although these people are below the poverty line, as well as the other 425 million individuals living in India, I really saw that they really utilized their resources well and really took what they had, even if it was at the bare minimum, and were so thankful with everything they were receiving. And that is something that really struck me and something that I really appreciated. So after Sight Savers, I went back and I began to analyze what happiness was. And it was a very, very different concept for me after seeing what I saw. And I began with this. I began that happiness, and I'm going to be honest, happiness to me was getting good grades, getting into my top school, having a beautiful home. And I'm sure kids of my generation think the same thing. I didn't hear any of those responses, but I'm sure those things, or thinking about those things, make you very happy. However, I remembered the smiling people I saw at Sightsavers, and I remembered that none of them had any sort of lavish or ambitious goals in life, and they were just kind of happy with what was going on at the moment. They weren't thinking so much about the future and thinking so much about what they had and what they needed to do to be successful. Yes, getting these good grades, getting into your top school, getting a good high paying job, that is great and you will feel very, very accomplished. However, success is not equal to happiness. And I think as a generation, we need to understand that success is not equal to happiness because these things that we envision, these things that we think will make us happy, they're only temporary and they won't last for long. Then I continued analyzing and I finally came to the conclusion that happiness was something that was really all around us. And happiness is a feeling, not an achievement. I'm gonna, I'm, and I'm gonna repeat that. Happiness is a feeling, not an achievement. And it is good in our society that we do have this pressure to really be the best and like because it allows us to innovate and it allows us to really advance our society both emotionally, technologically, socially, etc. However, we need to take a step back and kind of realize that we shouldn't be so sad if something doesn't go our way. We shouldn't be so impatient and arrogant and angry when something bad happens. Because in life there's good and bad experiences and as human beings we need to understand that who you are is your good and bad experiences and both of those constitute the individual you are and once you realize that that will make you a more confident and happy individual and once you're happy that happiness is contagious and it spreads around to everyone else so i'm going to end with this and always look at life through a more positive perspective. See the struggles and the challenges and bad experiences you face as opportunities to grow and learn. And these events in the last few weeks have really made me anxious and a lot of people anxious and has affected a lot of people in many ways. However, through this struggle, I'm slowly learning that Life has plenty of opportunities. You have so much support in life and you need to be proud of who you are and you need to be happy with that because you yourself have the control to change and make this world a better place. So thank you very much for listening to my speech and I really hoped you got something out of it and learned a little bit about my self-discovery about happiness and hopefully you are all beautiful human beings who can change this world and really make it a better and happier place. Thank you.